All right, folks, welcome back. We're gonna be going into unit three, boxes and enclosures uh, in this series. So make sure you have your course material, whether you're doing it online or in our console, and make sure you have your 2023 edition of the National Electrical Code handy. All right, let's go on and get into it. So here's what topics we're gonna to be discussing in this unit. There are certain objectives that you're gonna achieve here. Now, after we do this unit, you're gonna be able to determine the cubic inch capacity of boxes, whether they're metal or non-metallic. Uh, while installing uh, American wire gauge six and smaller, you're gonna understand what the cubic inch is for that conductor. Um, you're gonna be identifying which items are counted and which are not counted when we do box fill calculations. So that's this for here. Uh, you'll be explained why two switches mounted side by side in a two gang device box could each have different cubic inch volume allowances, depending on the size of the conductors that we take to that device. Remember now, when we do box fill, it's all about the conductors, not so much the device itself, but it's the conductors that connect to the device. Next, we'll determine the minimum box size, including plaster rings, extension rings, and et cetera, and if they add any volume when we're doing a box fill. Okay, so you have your box, it's got a specific value on it, but you might end up adding an extension or plaster ring, and if it's stamped, it might give you some additional volume. So we're gonna be looking at that here. Uh, we're gonna determine, explain the box requirements when using non-metallic sheath cable. So again, when you're using NMB, and we refer to that as non-metallic sheath cable, uh, we're gonna learn about how to do that, as, as well as the equipment granite conductors. Now there a, was a significant change in the 2020, and we'll go into that as well here in the 2023 edition. Uh, let's see here, we explained the minimum length of free conductor required to be left inside the box. So whether it's a raceway or a cable assembly, you come into a box, I need to have a certain amount of wire to work with. Uh, the good news is we did have a change in the 2023 that says, you know what, if I don't have enough, then I can splice it to get the amount that I need. And it's still the required amount of free conductor so that when you pull the wires out, you can make it up to the devices. But we do give some allowances now that allows us to say, well, well what happened if the, the person cutting the sheetrock uh, cutting that box in with a, like a roto zip, what if they accidentally cut my insulation? Well, now you do have some relaxation for that, but there is a certain amount of free conductor you have to have, and we'll go over that as well. Next is, uh, we'll recall that boxes and conduit bodies must remain accessible after the installation. We cannot lock, hide them in the walls, things like that. Uh, determine the type of box needed for various applications. Which would you need? FS box, if it's outside, exposed, uh, all those type of things. So we'll learn the different boxes. And we'll explain calculation procedures for junction boxes containing four AWG and larger. So where they're going to be used, for example, is, is pull boxes, things like that. Okay. Let's read the introduction, and if there's anything else that I need to explain, I'll go into a little deeper detail for you, uh, and feel free to follow along in your course material. Introduction. Choose the right type of size of box or enclosure is very important to installing a system essentially free of hazards. Article 314, and that's something you want to remember, so when you're dealing with boxes, 314 is where you're going to be covers a variety of provisions concerning boxes, outlets, device, pull, and junction, all of which are boxes, uh, conduit bodies, and the associated fittings. Box selection must be based on requirements for a given location, depending on where the box is being installed. For example here, dry, damp, wet, or even hazardous locations might dictate the box. Boxes have particular requirements concerning the maximum number of conductors. Boxes containing six AWG, and AWG, as you all know by now, is American wire gauge, so it deals with the size of the conductor itself. The six and smaller conductors are required to have a minimum cubic inch capacity, which is determined by the size and number of the conductors. So we're gonna learn all that, um, what the cubic inch volume is taken up by a 10 gauge, 14 gauge, 12 gauge, things like that. Boxes containing four AWG and larger conductors 
uh, are required to have a minimum height, width, and depth that is determined by the size and number of waste raceway entries. So we're gonna also look in this unit how to do the pull boxes, right? So all of that's gonna be covered and it's all based on the raceways that are coming into the actual pull box. Less about the conductors, more about the raceways when it comes to that. Now you might be asking, well, what about when it's like an MC cable? Then there's rules for us to transpose that and act like it's a raceway, even though it's a cable. But we have to take the conductors that are in the MC and we have to do a raceway fill calculation to determine what size raceway we would be using. And that's what we're gonna to use to determine the sizing of the box. But don't worry, we're gonna talk about that when we get there. All right, so boxes containing four AWG and larger conductors are required to have a minimum height, width, and depth that is determined by the size and number of raceway entries. Article 314 contains provisions for installing as well as supporting boxes and conduit bodies. Boxes must be rigidly and securely fastened in place, whether mounted on the surface, mounted to a framing member, or mounted in a finished surface, okay? which we refer to as recessed. Under certain conditions, the only means of support a box needs is two threaded conduits. So you could have two threaded conduits coming up, Okay, threaded meaning it's rigid or intermediate and it's supporting a box. So there's provisions where that would be acceptable. Under certain conditions, the only means of support a box needs is two threaded conduits. Access to conductors and device located within boxes and conduit bodies must be available. Article 314 covers more information than the length of this course allows such as manholes, boxes, pull and junction for systems that are over a thousand volts nominal. We don't get into the over thousand volts nominal, but it's important for you to understand that it is there. And so you wanna make sure that you're going to be reading that information because you never know when you might get something on an exam that literally talks about that. So. Hopefully you, are, okay, so that is our introduction. Hopefully you're ready to get started. We're gonna be venturing in to three, we're in unit three, we're gonna be de dealing in subdivision one and it's talking about the general requirements and we're gonna kick it off with metal boxes. Are you ready? All right, let's get started.